Hello and welcome along. As you probably know from the last video, I'm going to be changing this Stella fridge into a cabinet fridge incubator, ready for incubating the duck eggs and stuff that's coming up. So what I want to do is I want to make this, like I said in the previous video, as nice as possible. I don't want, I've seen them with cables everywhere and stuff and I don't want to. So first job I'm going to do today is I want to get all the crap out the back. I don't want nothing left in the back at all, apart from the power uh, socket thing that's in the back. And it's got obviously the power that goes up to the uh, temperature controller here and the internal light. So I want to use this because that's where my temperature controller is going to go along with the light switch. So it's going to go in here, I think. So I want to get all the crap out of the back and I'm going to work out how I can get it apart so I can get into the cavity so I can get all my cabling in there. So the plan is there's going to be a light bulb fit in here, light bulb fit in here, uh, the PC fan at the back, uh, and that's pretty much it. And then this is down here will be where the water trays things are for the humidity. So um, yeah, crack on, get the crap out of the back first. It's absolutely freezing down here. I need to put a heat on. I think I might actually have to revise taking the whole thing apart because it is proper sealed together a lot and I think the hassle of getting it all apart and then having to get it all bent back into shape and glued back together just to hide the cables in the inner skin is probably not the best idea I've ever had so I've cleared out all the crap out the back the compressor and stuff that's all gone I've taken the controller thing apart on the inside so I know what the wiring's like in there that's not a problem but what I'm gonna have to do then is I'm probably gonna have to obviously it's upside down I think what I'm gonna have to do then is come in from the sides to do the two light bulbs uh, come in from the back I might yeah, I might come in from the back on all of it so then the, the wiring can actually then just go and live back down in here or try and wedge, I don't know, I just didn't want, I wanted just to plug, plug in a wall, no cables, so it looks really smart. So I might persevere for a bit to see if I can get it apart, but it's just not, I don't really think it's going to benefit all that time and effort spent on trying to get it apart and prise it apart to bend it all back together, so I might as well just put the cables on the outside or on the back and then just go, well I've got in here and pretend. But um, yeah, I'm not getting very far, so I'll just uh, carry on with it. Right, I've decided that it's going to be way too difficult. I did try to open it all up, but to be honest, I've got, uh, I've just drilled out on the back for the fan to go on the back wall. So that's just going to be the only cable that's going to go straight out the back and down to the cavity at the bottom. So what I've done is I've found, I've got a pack of these four uh, plastic spacers, which are actually from a, um, a kit, you know, like you get a TV wall bracket. So you get the different size screws, the bolts and nuts and stuff. And these spacers came in with it. So they're gonna be perfect to stand it off against the back wall so that the air can circulate up the back and round and stuff. That's the plan. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the drain hole at the bottom to bring in the cables. The cables uh, that I'm gonna be, the, sorry, the light bulb fittings that I'm gonna reuse, they're, um, they're white cables, but I have got black. It's just normal. There's no earth wire in there. It's just live and neutral. So I'm gonna use the black cables with black cable clips inside. So you probably hardly even see them. So I'm almost to what I wanted to be by taking the whole thing apart, but I've saved loads of time. So yeah, the plan is now to get that installed. That goes out of its butt straight into a plug. Where is it? Got its own little transformer straight into a tiny little plug and that'll be the fan done and then i'm going to get the light bulb fittings and i'm going to change them. the light bulb fittings are white they have to stay white but yeah i'm just going to change the cables the two cables which are going to come uh up how's this going to work i'll figure it out i'll show you i'll tell you when i've done it
Right, okay, so that's the light fittings in now. I'm, I'm glad that I changed them out for the black cable because the black cable just looks a lot better than having the white cable. And obviously, because I couldn't go for the skin, I've just cable clipped them up and round and up to the main control panel at the top because that's where the feed's gonna come from. So what I've done is I've taken the, the panel out, but I will still be using it. So what I'm gonna do is keep the switch because I've got the wiring inside to keep the switch on. So you've got the feed wires coming in. So I'll keep the two spade connectors that will feed the light, but I'll chop into the cables for the change the control panel here. So what I'll do is then get my controller. My, this is a spare one, the Inkbird ST, ST1000 thingy. But yeah, what I'm gonna do is use this to obviously, this one was absolutely fine last season hatching out the stuff. So I'm gonna use this one again from the spare incubator and that's gonna be wired into the wires inside the fridge. So I'm not having to run extra wires everywhere, but obviously I didn't need this bit, so I'm gonna get the Dremel tool and cut this out, so that'll then fit like that, inside, nicely in the panel. I'm probably gonna to have to go and just about see. Yeah, it's just a little bit, no, I think that is literally just gonna fit in there. Obviously the cables won't, so I'm gonna cut out a bit of this as well. Uh, with the Dremel so that'll fit nicely in there in there all cables in there tidy and then that will go back up inside the fridge clipped all back up screwed up so it'll be all nice and tidy with me uh, red digital display up there so I'm getting there so yeah almost probably had enough today because it's getting dark and it's quite late so I'm gonna try and get this wired in I really am such a messy worker. I, I, honestly, I actually kicked over some nuts and bolts. They're still all over the floor, but I'll pick them up later. So basically, yeah, right, I've done now. So I've got the STC 1000 Ink Bird. It's all set in, good to go. I've just got to chisel out a tiny little bit more on this side. And then I've got to try and remember how to wire it all up. Which is gonna be difficult, because now obviously I've got to go to the fridge and wire it all up, but it hang in, then I can't sort of do it on here. Um, but uh, yeah, no, should, should, should be straightforward. So obviously the plan, I'll, I'll talk you through the wiring, but you have obviously different ascent. You've got the sensor, which then measures the temperature. And then you've got your power in and your neutral in, and then you loop it over to the relay for the heating. Uh, and then it goes to the light bulbs and such. But obviously, like I said, the planning it was to have all the wiring hidden all up the top of the incubator, which I think afterwards now, that's going to look all right. I've just got to tidy up a little bit. I did cut a bit too much and stuff, and I went through probably about five or six little sanding discs on the Dremel, which is annoying because they just ping off everywhere. So, yeah, I'm going to now get this set up to get the wire stripped back. I've got to cut into wires, break into wires, connect wires, because obviously I want to keep the light bulb that's going to go back on in and it's little plastic bit goes back on and job done so hopefully uh should be able to get that wired up without burning the shed down right so i've had to wait for batteries to charge up for the cameras so whilst I've been doing that, I've decided to have a little tidy up and start the wiring process, which I'll talk you through it because obviously the wiring is a rather important bit. So what I'm going to do now, I've literally just prepped terminals, stripped back wires and stuff, done the same in the fridge. So I'm going to show you what I've done. I've got a diagram that'll help you as well. And then we'll go down to the fridge, wire it into that bit and hopefully not blow the shed up. Okay, so what we've got basically, this is the instructions which i'll put a picture up and leave that on there for you so you can have a look for yourself so this is the wiring for this way so these are the terminals get out of the way so these here are the terminals 
here. You see? And this is how it gets wired up. So what I'm gonna do is show you what I've done. Let's move that to one side. So basically what I've done is just prep the live and neutral feeds that are in here. This black wire is actually the temperature sensor probe, which goes in the middle of the incubator. And then you've got live and neutral in, and then you've got the live, which is looped in to the, what is the heating relay. And then you've got the live that goes straight to the light bulb setting. So it is actually quite daunting, but it's not actually that bad. So you have your live feed coming straight in, which is down in the fridge, which then goes into number one, which is number one this side. No, it's not. Number one's this side. Put it upside down. Put it that way, Ben. Don't be silly. I'm not really going to get this all in. So, yeah, they go straight into number one. And then what it does then is loops from... So you can have it loop out of them. You could go straight from the mains to there or there. It doesn't really matter. That way round. So that is what I've done with this bit here. That's ready to go then straight in to the uh, mains in the fridge, this one. And then the other one, which is in number five, there's number six, sorry, that's going to go straight to the light bulb. So the two light bulb lives will come into here. The neutral, which again is set up as such. So the main neutral will come in. And obviously I've got another neutral wire, which then will feed the two the two light bulb neutrals will go straight into the neutral. Because the neutral wire just literally just carries the loop straight away, straight around to the bulbs and back to the mains. So that's the main one that we've got to work with. But also, I'll show you in a minute, we're going to go down to the fridge. Got no earth wire because I just don't need one. I'm not going to electrocute myself. I'm not stupid. So yeah, we'll go down to the fridge and then we're going to get it wired up, which is going to be obviously difficult because doing this on here was easy. Doing it down there is not going to be easy because I've got to kind of hold it. I might just get a bit of wood that I might be able to... I don't know. Let's go, let's go and have a look. Right, okay. So we're now down at the business end of it, which is to get this wired up so we can put it all back together. So I'm gonna get the probe, put that in there out of the way. Now I've drilled a little hole in the side, which is gonna fit, hopefully, well it should do, it'll fit both of the light bulb black cables in here. And this is hopefully, this is where all the wiring was originally, in here, and it's gonna stay in there. So what I've done at this end is that's the live and the neutral that feed in and I've just put connector blocks on here because straight away this is the neutral this is the live and this is the switch live for the actual internal light which is staying in here so that's all wired up ready to go back in and obviously I've got these connector blocks here so I can tap into the main live and the main neutral to then hook up to my ones that I've got here so that's the plan so what first of all we're going to do is strip back make sure I've got enough for this cable because that's going to go like sorry that way around that's gonna be going like so so i've got my hole there so i need to make sure that i can strip back these two cables and have enough to come in into this area and yeah that'll be fine so i'm just gonna quickly strip them back right okay so i've stripped the two light cables they're all prepped ready to go so what i'm gonna do now is stick them onto connector blocks and put them together. So what I want to do is put the two lives in a block together, two neutrals in a block together, and then they will go to the live and neutral that is coming from the uh, controller. So first things first is get these ready. So get a block. Oosh. Might as well prep a couple more, really, because I'm going to need them. God, so oh, for fuck's sake. Apologise for the language, but Sunday evening, it's freezing cold. Worked my ass off this weekend. Which I really have, actually. I'd, that fence I told you that I was doing. I've nearly finished it. I've just got to finish a little bit more feather boarding and then apparently I am putting the gates up which are coming on Tuesday. 
but it went well. I got Cam to help me yesterday because the 200 by 200 posts were bloody heavy, and uh, yeah, we managed to get it all in. I think it was about five or six bags of post creep per hole, but it looks alright. I've just got a few little tidying up bits to do, like I said, finish featherboard in the last bit, and then uh, yeah, back there Tuesday, hopefully to fix the gates up, which is uh, going to be a challenge. Never done that before. And then the spark is going to put them in because that's his job, not mine. Right, so these two neutrals are going to go together. Sometimes I do that, but I, don't. I prefer to put one in and then stick the other one in. All right, so there and there, two neutrals together. And then the two lives will go in a block together. Give them a little tug, make sure they're in there. It's all good. Right, so now what we're going to do is the hard bit, which is to get the live feed, which is here. So the main live feed is going to go to the live feed on here. So I've just got to prep another piece of uh, brown cable to go across there. And then the neutral cable, which is there, which I might actually just take, yeah, wasting my time there. Hang on a second. So, bloody wires everywhere. Get it right, get it right. Okay, so I've got the, so the number six on the diagram is the uh, switched live back out to the lights. So both lights are now in the switched live side. So now I've got to get the two lives here, which is the main live feed to the power of the thermostat, uh, the thermostat, the temperature controller. So these two lives have got to be doubled up and then they go straight into the main live, which comes out of the uh, actual fridge gubbins, which I'm going to quickly stick that in there now. Oh, again, it's balancing, it's balancing. Once these two are connected, then we literally are having it just dangling because that's what we have to do. Oh God, see, look at that, what a dumbass. I've connected them up, but I haven't actually fed the black cables through their little drilled out hole into it. Oh, seriously. All right, undo it, do it again, moron. Right, so, I actually got there eventually. Don't let this put you off, it's quite simple. Just refer back to the diagram that I stuck on or just pause the video, do a bit, play it, pause it again, just go through it slowly. So basically, if we go back right to the beginning, we have, as you can see here, live and neutral, which is coming in from the bottom of the fridge where we cut it off earlier. And then that's obviously been linked in with the original light fitting that's in here. So that's staying in here. And then we have the main live that goes, so we've got a live coming straight into the actual temperature controller. And then we have the live loop from that, that goes into number five, which is the heating live, continue live feed, which then goes into the relay. And then number six, which comes out, is the switch relay. So obviously when the temperature is set for your incubator temperature, then this will cut the light bulbs off. And then obviously your neutrals just have to form a complete loop. So the neutrals come from the light bulb, come the main neutral, then you've got your neutral to the fridge light, then the neutral goes into the temperature controller then it's that that's linked uh <coughs> that's linked as well with the light bulbs so that is basically wiring i did cut two wires off you might have seen that one was the white wire which was for the old temperature control uh switch that was in the switch uh, in the fridge and the other one was the earth wire which we don't need because i'll earth it afterwards but that basically is it now so now what i'm gonna do is try and get it all fitted in there get this thing back up in there Put a plug on the end of it, test it. Okay, it's a moment of truth time. It's all wired up, it should be correct. It should be all good to go. I temporarily put a plug on it at the back, just for now, just to test it. Unfortunately, the internal bulb is not gonna work because I accidentally dropped the drill on it whilst I was tidying up. So uh, we'll scrap that. I ain't got a spare one. I've got one in the oven, but I don't think Emma will appreciate me taking it out of the oven. 
So, I've sorted some wiring out. It's all good to go, apart from that internal light won't work, but I've put the light bulbs in. I've double checked everything, tightened every single screw to make sure no wires are gonna pull out because obviously it's a bit dangly. So the test is now to literally plug it in to see if the temperature controller comes on and the light bulbs, well, they should come on because it should still be set to 37.5 degrees from last time. Here it goes. Whee! Get in there. Let's have a look. Carefully does it. Don't want to mess around with too much wires. Oh yeah, 8.9 degrees it's reading in there. Which is about right because it's really cold down here. And it's just been switched on, so... Well, it switched the light bulbs on. So that's a good thing. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is probably leave it because it's late, 20 past eight. Yeah, leave it. So what I'm probably going to do now is go in, have a shower, leave it till tomorrow, and then I'll probably sort out all the wiring properly, try and get another light bulb for that. I might, I might have one. I've got a whole cupboard dedicated to light bulbs because I'm just like that. Might be one in there, try it, put it in there, then I'm gonna get it all put up here properly and then clean it all out. And then that's the internal bit done. So um, thanks for watching part one. Hopefully it was informative. I tried to make it the best I could do. Fan, lights, everything worked, brilliant. Tomorrow I'm going to then do the wiring on the back properly put the door back on, put the feet back on. Anything that I took off that I need to put back on, I'm gonna do that, make sure the wiring is properly put back into its connector thing at the back, and so put the cover back over it. Do things properly then. And then yeah, in part two, we're then gonna smart it up. I'm gonna put the smart controller in there, another temperature sensor, which is the one that I, uh, I'll leave a link to the video when I pimped up the smart benimator and I put the smart controller thing in there so that when the temperature spiked above 38 degrees, it set alarms off in the house. I'm gonna take that off the smart benefactor and put it in here because I will be testing this soon. So I think the only other thing it needs is probably, I don't know, might actually, I have someone that has an egg turner that might fit in here. He's um, gave me the dimensions and I haven't actually checked it properly, but it looks like it might fit which then I can use the hole for the drain plug to put that in and then I wouldn't have to ever open this. So I can actually utilize the fact that it's got a lock on it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to turn the notifications on and set your preferences to all. Uh, like the video, because that way it will tell YouTube that you liked it and therefore it will show you more of my videos. So see you in part two. Thanks for watching, bye.